Welcome to Plot Summarized, and here is Halloween 1978. Spoiler alert, viewer beware. On Halloween night in 1963, in the fictional suburban town of Haddonfield, Illinois, six-year-old Michael Myers suddenly stabs his teenage sister Judith to death with a chef's knife. For 15 years, Michael is incarcerated in the Smiths Grove Sanitarium, during which time he never speaks a word. On October 30th, 1978, Michael's psychiatrist, Dr. Samuel Loomis, arrives at the sanitarium to escort Michael to court for a hearing, hoping that Michael will be in prison for life. However, Michael breaks out of Smith's Grove and steals Loomis's car during his escape, killing a mechanic for his coveralls on his way back to Haddonfield. Upon arriving, he steals knives, ropes, and a white expressionless mask from a hardware store before returning home. On Halloween, Michael sees high school student Lori Strode drop off a key at the long-abandoned Myers house, which her father is trying to sell. Throughout the day, Lori notices Michael stalking her, and even though she is vocally alarmed by his presence, her friends Annie Brackett and Linda Vanderklok dismiss her concerns, arguing that he is probably a harmless admirer. Meanwhile, Loomis arrives in Haddonfield and finds Judith's tombstone missing from the cemetery, indicating that Michael has come home. He meets with Annie's father, Sheriff Lee Brackett, and they investigate Michael's house, where they immediately find a dead, partially eaten dog on the floor, further in Loomis's suspicion that Michael is in Haddonfield. Once upstairs, Loomis tells Brackett that in the 15 years he has known Michael, he has realized that Michael is pure evil. Even though Brackett is doubtful of the danger, he decides to patrol the streets while Loomis waits at the house for Michael to return. That night, Lori babysits Tommy Doyle while Annie babysits Lindsay Wallace across the street. Michael follows them and begins to spy on Annie before killing the Wallace's dog, Lester. A few moments later, Tommy sees Michael from the window and thinks that he is the boogeyman, but Lori does not believe him. After receiving a phone call from her boyfriend, Paul, Annie decides to take Lindsay over to the Doyle house to spend the night so she can be alone with him at the Wallace house. When she gets into her car, Michael appears from the back seat, and after strangling her, he kills her by slitting her throat. Across the street, Tommy Doyle sees Michael carrying Annie's dead body into the Wallace house, and he begins to behave erratically before Lori threatens to discipline him for scaring Lindsay. Soon after, Linda and her boyfriend Bob arrive at the Wallace house and find it empty. After having sex in an upstairs bedroom, Bob goes downstairs to get a beer, where Michael kills him by pinning him to the wall with a kitchen knife, taking a moment to admire his handiwork. Michael then poses as Bob in a ghost costume and confronts Linda, who sexually teases him to no effect. Annoyed, she calls Lori to find out what happened to Annie, but before she can say anything, Michael strangles her to death with the phone cord while Lori listened on the other end, thinking it is a joke. Meanwhile, on the streets, Loomis discovers the stolen car and begins to search the neighborhood for Michael. Suspicious of the phone call, Lori goes to the Wallace house to check on her friends. And when she gets there, she finds Judith's headstone along with her friend's dead bodies in an upstairs bedroom. Completely horrified, Lori flees to the hallway where Michael appears in the dark and slashes her arm, causing her to fall over the stairway banister. Dazed and injured, Lori manages to escape and run back to the Doyle house, but upon arriving, she realizes that she lost the keys to the front door during her altercation with Michael. When Tommy lets her into the house, Lori orders Tommy and Lindsay to hide and tries to use the telephone for help, only to find that the phone is dead. Soon after, Michael sneaks through the window and attacks her again, but she incapacitates him by stabbing him in the neck with a knitting needle. Thinking he is dead, Lori staggers upstairs to check on the children, but is later shocked when Michael approaches to attack her again. Panicked, she tells the children to hide in the bathroom while Lori herself hides in the bedroom closet. When Michael finds her, Lori pokes his eye out with a coat hanger, causing Michael to drop his knife, which Lori then uses to stab him in the chest. After discarding Michael's knife, she meets with Tommy and Lindsay and tells them to go down the street to a neighbor's house so they can call the police. After they leave, Michael awakens once again and slowly approaches an unsuspecting Lori. From the streets, 
Loomis sees the children running from the house and goes to investigate, only to witness Michael attempting to strangle Lori. In desperation, Lori snatches Michael's mask off, distracting him as he releases her to put it back on. After confirming his identity, Loomis shoots Michael six times in the chest, knocking him off the balcony. Lori asks Loomis if Michael was the boogeyman, which Loomis reluctantly confirms. Wanting to make sure he's dead, Loomis immediately walks to the balcony, but when he looks down, he discovers that Michael has vanished. Unsurprised, he stares off into the night as Lori sobs, knowing that the boogeyman is still out there. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos.